by short term, I'm meaning uh, very short term. And I think it's important to remember that we have two year terms, which is a very short amount of time to get any uh, serious legislation passed. That's just the reality of the way our system works. Um, one of the things I'm going to be working on this fall is looking at ways to amend our tree ordinance to better protect trees on private property. Um, that's been a huge concern of mine for the, um, ever, you know, ever since I realized that our tree canopy had really diminished um, and that with climate change we need more shade, um, more green and we need to do a better job of protecting the trees we have. Um, public trees have some protections, but private trees have virtually none, and I'd like to change that by amending the ordinance um, and requiring payments into the city's tree fund so that any trees lost, um, we have the funds to replace them. So that's one priority this fall. Um, another priority I have is to um, keep working on an ordinance that we suggested, which would be to impose a tax on vacant and abandoned buildings to discourage land banking and uh, to discourage landlords from leaving commercial spaces vacant, which blight the community and just aren't good for anyone. Um, and another thing I would like to work on, also related a little bit to the vacant buildings, is Harvard Square. Um, I put in a policy order earlier this term to ask for a review of the guidelines of the historic conservation area. Um, so I would like to see that followed through on um, and have a, you know, a robust discussion about what we can do to salvage what we love about Harvard Square. One of the objectives I had, which I wish weren't a long-term objective, but I recognize that it may be, even though we've been talking about it for years, is to figure out a way to create more connections around ale life, particularly um, a multi-use pedestrian bike bridge over the railroad tracks to connect the area um, around the T-Station to the Concord Avenue side. Um, also more just non-auto connections around ale life so that it can be uh, better for walking rather than driving. We can't control the large part of the traffic that streams through the rotary, so if we're going to develop that and put residents there, they need to be able to move around uh, without contributing to the traffic and without um, sacrificing their own health. Um, I would also longer term, but hopefully not too long term, like to be able to offer every four-year-old a seat in kindergarten. At the moment, only about two-thirds of four-year-olds um, attend kindergarten for two years. So I think that that's an inequity that we could pretty easily address, although I know that it, we need to um, you know, build more classrooms and hire more teachers. It's not simple but it's certainly doable. Um, and then third, I would say housing. We need to find other solutions other than just increasing the inclusionary percentage um, to get more affordable housing. And that could be imposing a transfer tax on real estate sales. It could be also just spending more money um, out of public funds. So we have municipal parking lots that we could build 100% affordable housing on. Um, that would you know, mean that we didn't have to invest money to buy land, and, and one of the problems with building affordable housing in Cambridge is that land values are so high. So it's hard for any nonprofit developers to compete um, with you know, for-profit developers when the land values are so high. Zoning reform could help that if we had an affordable housing overlay that would give the nonprofit developers a leg up and the ability to compete. So we need a bunch more solutions. I also would look hard at further increasing um, what's known as the linkage fee, which is a fee that's assessed on a per square foot basis for commercial and institutional development um, that goes toward our affordable housing trust.